It's time for another polling question. All of our neighborhoods are changing in some way or another. How do you feel about the changes happening in your neighborhood? One, positive, two, negative, or three, neutral? Let's see the results. Next, for a session produced by our underwriter Allstate, please welcome Levante Stewart, the Executive Director of Chicago's Lost Boys, Inc. Melissa Sawyer, the Founder and Executive Director of New Orleans Youth Empowerment Project. And welcome back Elizabeth Brady, Executive Vice President and Chief Marketing Officer at Allstate. To lead the conversation, Pat Kiernan, Morning News Anchor at New York One News. I feel like we're far, you wanna be closer or further? Good to be here with, uh, with all of you. Uh, our, our focus in this session is on doing good in our communities and, and being a force for good, which can sometimes happen accidentally. Somebody stumbles into something, but usually it, it is a deliberate process. And, and if something works in one community, it'll probably work in another. We, we can learn from people who have uh, seen things go in the right direction. And some of them are with me here right now. Elizabeth Brady is one of the people behind this morning's event. She's the chief marketing officer of Allstate. Levante Stewart Sr. is the founder of Lost Boys, a Chicago program which started by connecting troubled youth uh, through baseball. And that program uh, won a renewal award in 2017. And uh, Melissa Sawyer is with me, the leader of an organization that also won a renewal award. Her youth empowerment project based in New Orleans yet provides young people with education and mentoring and employment readiness programs. So, so we'll, we'll get to it. I'll start, I'll start with Elizabeth. Uh, you have uh, at Allstate now done these uh, renewal summits in half a dozen places across the country. What, what is the connection between this and selling insurance? So we actually live and work in communities all across the United States, and we have over 10,000 agencies that live in those communities. So we have a real responsibility to create sustainable and real change in the places that we really spend the most time. So the renewal awards have started, it actually started quite a while ago in partnership with now The Atlantic around a poll that was done around the time of the last market crash. And it was the Heartland Monitor, and it was really designed to gauge what the consumer sentiment was when things really went south during the crash. And what we learned was that people across the country were tired of waiting for the government or institutions to create change. So they got really scrappy and smart and created that change themselves. So that's what we're really here to celebrate, are those people that have endured throughout that time period and created really meaningful change in the communities without the help of institutions to um, get them going. Okay, I, I wanna ask the... Um the skeptical New Yorker question, the, the, because the mayor was just up here talking about what, what didn't end well with, with Amazon in New York City and that <laughs> relationship with, with corporate America. What, what can corporate America do so there isn't that skepticism from the public about what their motivations are? It's a good question. And, you know, we do have a responsibility as business people to create jobs and to help fuel the economy but that's not where it stops. We really have way more of a responsibility to get into the communities and create change. That's where our employees work. That's the communities that we spend our time with. And those are the people that we're asking to join our business and buy our products. So if we're not giving back, we're not doing our part as business leaders. And we, we, you have to do it in a credible, meaningful way. Uh, Levante and Melissa, I think that this question applies to both of you, so you can, you can jump in on this. You are both focused on youth programs. What, what was it that led you to, to youth as being an area where there could be real impact? Um, oh, whoa. Well, good, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so as a co-founder of the Youth Empowerment Project in New Orleans, we started in 2004, a year before Hurricane Katrina. And really the reason we started was that there were no programs in the state of Louisiana providing young people who were incarcerated with reentry supports. And so YEP was actually the first juvenile reentry program in all of Louisiana. Um, again, being in New Orleans prior to Katrina meant that we were positioned though to continue to expand and to, to meet community needs. And so we've grown a lot more into education and prevention work 
um, as well as continuing to support young people who are engaged in the juvenile justice system. But we really came out of a need because there were no programs that existed that were actually providing the nurturance, the love, the support, the skills, and the opportunities that young people needed. Well, for me, Pat, it was um, <clears throat> there had been a decline in African American participation in baseball for a long time. So around maybe 2004, 2005, I started coaching in a, a local league that got resurrected in my own community, mm -hmm. a league renamed after a league I, I grew up in. And one day during that, the gentleman shut down the league around maybe 2008. And I was kind of saying goodbye to my boys. I was going to send them to other teams in our district like Jackie Robinson West and all of this good stuff. And so it's the middle of the afternoon in the summer. And uh, we see two guys are chasing another guy across the field, gun out. I'm old school. I hit the dirt. The kids are laughing, joking. So at that point, I recognized the seriousness of it and how desensitized they were to violence. So there, Lost Boys was kind of born. I couldn't stop. I had to keep going with this group of kids. Well, this is a little bit what I was talking about with sometimes there's yeah. an accidental moment where it's you, an you, moment, you exactly. see something and it, it takes off from there. Yeah, and, and so for me, it, it, uh, it also tied back to experience growing up in the community and experiences, the, the negative experiences that I had, had as well. So I understood what kids were going through. So we devised this solution. Uh, Elizabeth, you, you have... Um this group of 10,000 agents across the country, and in some ways you've got 10,000 different ears to the ground, which probably sometimes is a bad thing because they all have a different idea about what you should be doing, but, but it's also 10,000 different sources for here's a need in this community, here's a need in that community. H how do you tap into that? We have a really great network, and there's a lot of sharing that goes on through programs like this, but then just our outreach into the communities to understand what the needs are in those individual areas and what solutions our agents are pro providing already, and then how can we step in and help them make those solutions better, faster, um, more sticky so that they actually work. So we really do listen and we learn. We also have times where, you know, catastrophic things happen in communities that we we have our our people in um, and all state shows up we show up first we show up fast and we help people rebuild their lives and i think that's the best contribution we can we can bring is you know restoring people's lives when something bad happens melissa can you talk about that that connection between one local program in one city and the rest of the country, how can we learn from each other and really take something and, and bring it somewhere else and build on success? Well, and I think this is something really to applaud Allstate for doing is, is with this initiative to look at local innovative solutions to addressing community challenges. But a lot of the criteria also is what is the, the replicability of these programmings around the nation? And we know that many of our communities are facing a lot of the same challenges. And so it's really about investing in lifting up and then finding opportunities to share lessons learned to support community partners around country. I would also just say we're in a time now where the vast majority of funding that I get and other folks get is private funding. It is corporate philanthropy. And so we really do need the business community to step up to support what in, in many places we might think should be human services or basic needs that are covered by public funding, but oftentimes that's just not the case. And so again, really looking at where we can have strong community corporate partnerships, I think that's how we're going to continue um, to positively impact this country. Milana, you want to jump in on that? Yeah, I mean, I totally agree with, uh, with Melissa. And I think for far too long in this country, we have dictated to communities what they should do and how they should do it. But as Melissa said, it's about, uh, and I think Allstate is wonderful at modeling this, Pat, of receiving from a community what they want and what they need because those change makers are brilliant mm -hmm. in these communities. They have ideas that you've never thought of, and those ideas are germane and relevant mm -hmm. to that localized community, but you can't spread things without kind of just, you know, taking over. And I think, again, Allstate does a wonderful job of listening to organizations around the country and figuring out how do we help without overstepping our boundaries. But, but a, a great idea in Chicago is not necessarily a great idea somewhere else in the country. That's right. Maybe even just in a different neighborhood. Yeah. It, it may, may not, your approach may not work. So, so who, 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 who leads there? Do, does... Uh, does the idea take you somewhere that it wants to go, or, or is, is that where you have to use your expertise to shape the idea? 
I think it's a little bit of both. What do you think, Melissa? Well, no, so I think that, again, it's not necessarily about um, replicating 100% of a program, but I think that there are a lot of commonalities and a lot of lessons learned that we've learned in some communities that we don't need to start from scratch other places. And so I think if we can help build local capacity, if we can say, hey, this actually didn't work, I think oftentimes 70 or 80% of a model actually could be transferred to communities if you're dealing with the same sorts of challenges around disengagement, disconnection, high incarceration rates, behavioral health issues, mental health issues, lots of access to childcare and things of that nature. So I think there actually is a lot of transferability. It's about how then are we building on local capacity, local skill set, not necessarily coming into a new community, but making sure that we're sharing and imparting the knowledge that we've learned in other communities. I would also add a role that business can play in making that happen is really, you know, connecting the dots for everyone. There's great things happening, you know, in individual communities that if we can be the network to help share those ideas, that can really help other people get things off the ground, learn things that are working, avoid things that aren't working. So I do think when, when there's a business that is as far reaching as ours or others that can also contribute to this effort, we really need to step in and help spread that word. What, what about cutting through the, the clutter? Too? There's so many things competing for our attention and I'm sure it, you find it with with supporters that if, if you get them in the right moment they're they're all engaged but if you, you get them in the wrong week they, they you might you might not get their engagement how do, how do we cut through that clutter in 2019 well I don't know we're, st we're still working on it still figuring it out but um, the thing that really jumps out at me is your ability for your story to resonate with people. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter if we're male, female, black, white, Hispanic, gay, straight, we're all human. And we all can understand one another on that level. And so when your storytelling uh, just kind of reaches deep into the heart of people, I think that helps you kind of move past some of those barriers that we run into as nonprofit leaders. Have, have your organizations changed in the time since they were were founded. I, mean, I know for, with, with Lost Boys, it was, it was boys baseball originally. Uh, you, you, where, where does it go next? It's, it's expanded thanks to the Atlantic and Allstate. We recognized uh, some of the things that were occurring with the boys we saw with the girls. And so we expanded that program and brought them in under fast pitch softball. And we're also now following coach Justine Siegel, one of the first women hired in Major League Baseball. And we're going to be competing in a baseball tournament with girls, <laughs> baseball for all. So there's this big movement to get girls in baseball. So, yeah, it's, it's, uh, our world is changing and it's exciting. Melissa, what's ahead for you? Yep. Yeah, so when we started in 2004, we only worked with 25 kids that first year. Our budget was $235,000. We had five staff. Now our budget's about $4 million. We're touching over 1,200 young people. We're actually helping to build capacity of an organization in Houston who's replicating our employment readiness program. So we have 50 staff. Um, we pay a living wage to all our staff. We ensure that we have health care for all of our staff. So again, we're really trying to live our values and to ensure that we're imparting that to the community that we're a part of. And, and when, when somebody has a, an idea of their own, uh, where, 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 where do they go? I mean, if you had one piece of advice for them about, about taking it into the world and, and being that force for good, what, uh, what can you tell them as they're starting out with a new idea? I'm like Nike. Just do it. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't be scared. Jump in. Follow your heart. That's what this country is all about. That is really what the American dream is. Yeah, I would say use your skills to do good. Make sure you follow your passion. Stay centered and anchored in who you are. Live your core values. Um, I guess I would slightly um, take that in a different direction. I think in some cases we have an oversaturation of nonprofits and not enough resources. And so if you could continue to build or be a part of something that's already existing, so we're not kind of dividing up a really limited pie more than it needs to be, then make sure you're bringing those ideas to existing community partners and organizations. Elizabeth, you've uh, brought us all together. So final thought to you as we, uh, uh, as we head through this renewal summit, I'm sure there will be, be more ahead. What what should we be thinking about and uh, and what can the the corporate contribution to that be we absolutely have a responsibility to support programs like these not just um you know in lip service but with our financial support mm -hmm. with our with our help 
um, to get these programs off the ground. And you know, we need to continue to do that. We need to do it in meaningful ways. And I think organizations that are a part of this program should lean on us and ask us for help because that's why we're here. Okay, you, you, you've invited that. <laughs> we'll see where it goes from here. Good to have you all with me this all morning. Right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks very much. <laughs>